Thanks for, uh, firstly, thanks to KIM for inviting me. Really, for me, it's a pleasure to share with all of you my, uh, our experience with the Young Reader platform analysis in the, in the analysis of liquid biopsy samples. Firstly, I would like to introduce my company. Pangai Oncology is a company led by Dr. Rafael Rosell in Barcelona and is specialized in the field of precision oncology. We have two uh, uh, different areas, the patient care area and the molecular diagnosis that are very close uh, interacted area in terms of access to a great uh, number of samples, serum and plasma and tissue samples, and also in terms of access of the new, rapid and new, uh, of the new technologies in, in order to apply it in, in the daily practice of our patients. The patient care unit uh, manage the oncology service of four hospitals inside the Kiron Salud group, and also we have a very active clinical trial unit with uh, actually f 46 uh, clinical trials open. Uh, being uh, our lab, uh, laboratory, central laboratory of uh, five of them. In the part of the uh, molecular diagnostic laboratory, we were the first accredited laboratory in Spain for dia clinical diagnostics in tissue samples and also in liquid biopsy. We are leader in the liquid biopsy analysis with more than 2,000 molecular tests per year, and we also uh, provide the service in more than 14 global pharmaceutical companies around the world. Our accredited tests included in liquid biopsy included the analysis of EGFR, BRAF, and KRAS genes using a simple and high sensitivity and specific method. Uh, and also, we are very uh, expert and we have a lot of experience in the analysis of fusion strands and splice and variants in the platelets and plasma of our oncologic patients. Our group has been a pioneer in the analysis of circulating tumor DNA, as you can see in the several publications that are uh, reported during the last years. And now we can begin with a brief introduction of the, the, the situation. Lung cancer. Lung cancer for me is one of the best examples of targeted therapy. Why? Because if 30 years ago, only KRAS and BRAF were the biomarkers uh, available or detected in non-small cell lung cancer patients. Today, with the new advance in molecular translational research, we are able to detect a group or subset of different molecular alteration, driver alteration that included met, uh, or variant splicings, uh, gene amplifications, fusion variants, other new mutations, and the important thing is that all of these uh, molecular alterations are targeted therapies now. So, for this reason, it really is very important to, to implement the multiplexing analysis of, the, of all of these uh, genetic alterations in the clinical practice of the patient. Why? Because we also know that in some tumors, for example, non small cell lung cancer and bad set patients, we know that in the most cases there are not enough material to do all the molecular analysis. So, in this way, maybe the use of liquid biopsy could be a good surrogate of this analysis. We understand the liquid biopsy analysis as analysis of tumor material obtaining in the minimal invasive way or non invasive way. So the sampling of blood or other fluids, such as saliva, urine, cerebrospinal fluid. The less material retains the genotype and molecular alteration of the tumor in each stage of the disease. So really, we can do a real snapshot of the disease in this stage or in each stage. Also, the circulating tumor DNA concentration, we know that depends on location, size and vascularity of tumor and represent less than 1% of all circulating free DNA. Although we know that tissue biopsy will continue to have 
a key plate, a key role in the management of the cancer, maybe uh, it's true that liquid biopsy could be a good surrogate, could be a new application or surrogate for the analysis uh, in early stage, or early, early detection of the disease, also in prognosis detecting the patients with a high risk to relapse, also in decision, treatment decision, and of course, in the monitoring the response to the treatment. And in this way, of course, gene reader and the system could be a clinical research solution for the analysis of liquid biopsy samples. As commented Lisa before, this is a panel, the actual inside tumor panel, that are designed to detect the most clinical relevant pathogenic variant in the most frequently solid tumors, breast, ovarian, colorectal, lung, and melanoma patients with analysis of complete, complete analysis of 12 genes. As Lisa commented before also, the, uh, the flow work, the world float of the gene reader system includes some uh, steps and some quality control um, process and end with a complete analysis of the variant and the interpretation of the variant detected by the world float. We want to focus in the isolation of circulating free DNA. So I would did Kayajan recommend the use of packed gene tubes in order to, to the stabilization of the plasma sample and also recommends and also recommends the use of Kayam circulating nucleic acid kit. Okay. And say also that it is recommended to use a DNA concentration of 2.5 nanograms microliters. However, concentration as low as one nanogram microliters can be used for NGS processing. Less than this concentration cannot guarantee the quality of the results. So about this, I want to, to, some, to discuss with you some consideration if you want to implement the analysis of liquid biopsy in our lab. The first step is a sample. The matrix. Normally, uh, the standardization is the use of plasma as a matrix for liquid biopsy analysis. But we know, we have been uh, published in several uh, articles, that is not the, the, only, the only one. Matrix, we demonstrate that the serum could be a complementary good matrix in the analysis of blood. So in our patients, we always recommend it and we always do the analysis in both types of specimen, serum and plasma samples. The other thing is, is we know that um, depending on the location of the tumor, other types of uh, body fluids could be a good, for a good source of tumoral circulating DNA. This is a case of the patients with brain metastasis. You know, with patients with brain metastasis have a higher concentration of circulating tumor DNA in the cerebrospinal fluid than in plasma. So in, the, in this type of patients, maybe cerebrospinal fluid could be a better type of samples. The other thing is the amount of samples. Okay, although we know that liquid biopsy is easier to obtain than tissue biopsy, sometimes we have not enough samples to do the analysis. Not in, in all of cases we have five milliliter, 10 milliliters of blood. No, sometimes we have one, two, and we need to analyze the, the samples because they are patients that need the result for treatment. So my recommendation is that it is important is to, to try to optimize or, or select what is the best uh, method for the isolation circulating free DNA, depending of the type of samples, depending of the characteristic of the laboratory. For example, in our laboratory, we have the very good experience with the use of Kaya Symphony. We love Kaya Symphony. Why? Because we have a large number of samples every day 
but we have not a lot of materials. So we have a custom protocol for the isolation of circulating free DNA, mRNA, uh, circulating free RNA in serum, plasma, platelets, and all the fluid that we receive every day. And this is very important also. The other thing is the collection of the sample. So as commented Lisa, passing tubes really is a very good solution for the stabilization of the plasma, of the circulating free DNA. But what happened? If we use passing tubes, it's necessary to do or to follow correctly the protocol because it is important to mix immediately eight to ten times the tubes in order to mix well. Another thing is also the vaccine tube, at least in Spain, is not always available in all of hospital. So if you cannot use vaccine tubes, it is very important to quick a centrifugation of serum and plasma within the few hours after the extraction. And finally, the workflow. The workflow is very important also. We know that uh, circulating tumor DNA represents less than 1% of all circulating free DNA in the blood, in the fluid. And so we need techniques with high sensitivity and high specificity. If you want to use this type of technique, you cannot obtain good results. Oops. Uh, these are all of the steps that Lisa also commented, laboratory preparation and target enrichment. And here you can see a, a real example of samples free, uh, running by the gene reader system. This is a real uh, tissue samples you can see here after the target enrichment. We have a very good peak, around 150 uh, pair of bases that increase around 92 pair of bases after the labial preparation by the, uh, the added the adapters barcodes. But what happened in the liquid biopsy samples? That really, we could not obtain these good peaks. Why? Because sometimes we're working with concentration with less than one nanogram per microliter concentration that is recommended by KIM. But we need to work because they are, we have not more samples and we need to continue the process. It's, it's very important. And in our experience, we can solve this, we can improve the quality of the library preparation by adding more quantity or more concentration of the target enrichment during the library preparation, of course, inside the specification of the protocol of Kayagin. And this is an example, uh, uh, an example of uh, the customization of the final report that we obtain with a gene reader system. This is a custom report for our lab, and it's very complex. And you can personalize the information that you want to appear, of course, in each hospital, in each laboratory. And now I want to present the data for the analytical performs testing using the gene reader samples. We analyzed 77 samples previously genotyped in our lab by our techniques. Uh, 34 meshed, uh, meshed plasma and serum samples, two plasma only, two serum only, two pleural fluids, three cerebrospinal fluids, two urine, urines, and two peritoneal lavage. And as you can observe, and you, as you can observe, or as you observe here, in the majority of samples, the DNA input concentration are below the specifications of Kyogen. So, are below that one nanogram microliter. But we will analyze it, and despite this, we are very happy because we are very good results of 77 bad samples. Only in two cases failed the sequencing. And in 88%, we obtained a fully concordance result with the, our techniques. In five cases, 
we have discordant results, and in four cases, we have these four cases where four EGFR mutant patients with concomitant T798 mutations. And in these cases, gene reader can detect the sensitizing mutation, but not the T790 mutation because they are in very low concentration of allelic fractions. And this is an example of one of these. This is a female, 69 years old, non-smoker, lung adenocarcinoma, with a rare, very rare uh, EGFR dilation in exo 19, 24 perus basis dilation, with pleural progression to a lot in it. They are not blood available and only pleural fluids. With the gene reader panel, we can detect without problem the 24 perus basis dilation in exo 19, but we cannot able to detect the T790 mutation. The T790 mutation was only can be detected with, with our PNA specific tagline assay because, as you know here, the, the percentage of mutated allelic fraction is really lower, 0.05%. This has also a good concordance between serum and plasma samples. It is in the cohort of serum and plasma matched samples, but plasma seems to be better than serum. And finally, for end my presentation, I want to show you two examples of the potential applicability of the NGS ring to the panel in the evolution of the monitorization of the evolution of the disease in our oncologic patients. The first clinical example is a real patient treated in our hospital by Dr. Santiago Viteri. These are uh, colorectal carcinoma patients with metatic, hepatic metastasis at diagnosis, as you can see here. The analysis of uh, molecular biomarkers at diagnosis in the initial biopsy reveals no, no relevant pathogenic variants by pyrosequencing and Sanger sequencing. And patient was treated with different lines of treatment with a good response, and after two years, the patient had a dramatically progression disease with a serial different lung metastasis and also with different hepatic metastasis. We cannot take, uh, get uh, uh, samples, tissue samples of this, none of these uh, metastases, and only the blood. And the analysis in blood show that a multiple and different K-RAS and N-RAS pathogenic variant as, a, as an acquired mechanism of resistance to setuximab and also probably explained by the, uh, the fact that uh, different pattern of the resistant clones that appears as a mechanism of resistance. We try to reproduce these results with the gene reader panel in the same sample. And in fact, we obtain that in the initial tissue biopsy, we cannot detect any relevant pathogenic variant by the gene reader panel. And also the most interesting thing is that at the time of progression in the blood of the patients, the circulating free DNA analysis by the gene reader was fully concordance in all of different variants in KRAS and NRAS with our Tagman specific assay. So it is very amazing scene. And then the last case is a very interesting case that has been accepted this month in the, in the Journal of Thoracic Oncology. Journal uh, is a work done in collaboration with the Dr. Noemi Reward in the hospital clinic in Barcelona. This is a very interesting case because it's the first uh, clinical evidence of successful treatment with hefetinib, that is a first-line tyrosine kinase inhibitor in non small cell lung cancer patient with acquired acquire resistance to osimertinib, that is a cell-line tyrosine kinase inhibitor. In this case, the patient is 70 years old, non-smoker, lung adenocarcinoma with EGFR dilation. At diagnosis, at diagnosis, the patient was treated with afatinib, 
when the patient progresses to a fatty nipped, we can get a biopsy of the sample, and in the biopsy, we detected the appearance of the T797, T79 mutation, resistant mutation, at time to progression. Concomitant with the sensitizing mutation. The patient received osimertinib, and after seven months, the patient progressed again. We also can take a new biopsy, and that observed is that the concomitant EGFR sensitizing mutations appears with a new resistant t 797 mutation that these mutations appear as a resistant, a quite resistant to osimertinib, but also the interesting thing is that the disappearance of t 798 mutation in the tissue, in the, in the re-biopsy of the patient. And based on the preclinical data, the oncologist decided to retreat again the patients with fair, first line tyrosine kinase inhibitor with a very good response in only one month. From the point of view of the laboratory, we performed the analysis in blood of the patients with our technique, and we observed the disappearance of the T790 mutation in the blood and also the appearance of the C797A mutation in blood. And the analysis of the gene reader showed that we also can detect the sensitizing mutation in blood. We cannot detect the T790 mutation in blood. And interesting, we detect also the C797S new resistant mutation in the blood of the patient with the gene reader system. But we can detect out of specs in the section of our specs. Why? Because with this panel, the C C797FS is excuse me mutation appears out of the region of interest. But with the new panels, with the long, new long panels, uh, we can solve this this situation and uh, we are included these new mutations inside the region of interest. So that is all. Thank you very much.